Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 128. This episode is with the fantastic Denim Richards, who, apart from having one of the coolest names I've ever heard, is also just a really cool dude. And what was fun about talking to him is he's very honest, he keeps what he's saying, like, very practical, which I really respected. And he's just, he's such a good actor, so it's kind of interesting to hear about his journey to get to where he is now. We talk about how he actually started in musical theater as a kid, how he grew up singing and then eventually decided to make the jump from stage to screen. And he talked about how he actually had to adapt adapt his acting style to go from being huge and big in theater to bringing it down to, you know, acting with your eyes. And he has great, great advice about following your dream and putting in the work. And it was awesome. It was awesome. And we talked about Yellowstone, which season four is coming. They're currently working on it. So anyone that's a fan of that show, it sounds pretty exciting what they're working on. Obviously, we couldn't talk about spoilers. Just a heads up. Um, and then Denim actually gives some of the greatest, most practical advice for up-and-coming actors that I've heard in a long time. So super cool getting to talk to him, hearing about his journey. Such a smart, awesome dude. So I was really excited to talk to him, and this was great. So let's get right into it. Uh, without further ado, please enjoy the interesting podcast episode number 128 with Denim Richards. Theme song time. <laughs> pretty good just been uh you know always it's always packed and always nice and full of things so i'm always excited to have a day of things to do yeah okay. there you go are you good with free time because i'm terrible uh you know i don't have too much free time i do so much studying all the time sure so i i guess not i yeah. guess i'm not <laughs> good with free time. I, every time i have it i just opt to not have free time anymore and I, it's I'm always the same. funny because people always like you said you didn't have a lot of work to do. I'm like, yeah, I just created yeah. <laughs> work to do. And now that's really important. I got to do it. It's like, okay. So yeah, not great with it. Yeah, I'm the exact same way. I'll have a lull where I'll have, I'll, I'll have like a week. I'll say a week max where I'm like, I don't have anything to do. I should change this. And then the next week I'll be way too booked and have like 20 right. things. And I'm like, why right. am I doing this to myself? Why, why do I do it? It's like this whole thing of like, We've, we've gotten so indoctrinated to, like, need to be busy all the time. Yeah. Like, we associated, like, being busy with being productive and successful. 100%. That, like, having nothing to do somehow means the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's fine. It can also just mean that everything's fine and you can just relax. That's so right. we really got to do better at that. We got we to gotta be better. Yeah. We Okay. We are now accountability buddies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just text you now and be like, are you are you drinking water? Are you are you Yeah, and be like, hold on, I just gotta finish this product <laughs> or whatever, and as soon as I'm done, I'll, I'll get right back to you. That's right. I'll be like, I'm really busy right now, Denim. Give me a second. Yeah, <laughs> and, give me a second, like, I gotta finish this up. In like three yeah. days, I'll hit you back. <laughs> yeah, I'll hit you right back up, I promise you, and I just have thirty more seconds. Yeah, it's I'm the, good. I'm the exact same way. I I feel like that's a creative thing though. I feel like people that are creative, we have this like ridiculous amount of drive that we have to funnel into something. Or I could just be yeah, justifying our disorder. Yeah, otherwise, you, you start to, like, that torch that you have can be very destructive. Yeah. You know, so it's like you do. I think it's so – I do. I think there's, like, this balancing act. And I also think it's like, you know, we can find productive things to do in relaxation yeah. as long as we don't try to take the things that we're doing in relaxation and then, like, let's create a business model. Yeah. It's like, no, don't do that. Like, just enjoy it for what it is and let it go. Uh, you know. <laughs> So I've never really been great at that. That's why, like, all my friends are always like, you know, you can't have downtime. I'm like, I know that I should. Yeah. But then it just <laughs> creates this model of, like, but I could be doing this and I should be doing this. And so mm -hmm. I just I, – what I've done now is I just – I focus on making sure I get sleep. Um, uh. And so, like, I just make sure – before, like, last year, I'd be like, oh, if I just get five hours, I'll be fine. I'm like, there's no point. Yeah. Like, I want my eight hours. <laughs> like, I'll take my eight hours however I have to get it. Even if I have to go to bed at eight, I'm going to get my eight hours. There and so go. I think that's the opportunity for me where I'm like, that's the time where I don't have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I have to knock myself out to make sure I'm not doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. A, a dog that needs to 
be on a leash all the time. That's right. I, I also love that we both know the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst part. I know the it. issue. I know what I'm doing. It, it's the worst part because then you have all the justifications that come right behind it. And that's exactly that's this year I'm gonna try to make more I'm making more conservative efforts, like especially now. Sure. I'm like just sit and just be still and just relax and then I've noticed that when I do do that I have far more energy and mm. focus when I actually have to do something. Sure. And so I think it's just kind of training yourself to just accept it because there is a benefit on the other side of it. Sure. In theory, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, how's the, how's the pandemic been for you? It's kind of weird, right? Yeah. The pandemic has been really, you know, it's interesting. We, um, I, you know, I was at home for most of it and now I'm back. Um, we're st- uh, just started shooting season four Yellowstone. Right on. Um, so I'm actually in Montana right now. Sweet. Um, but yeah, for, for the, uh, for the bulk majority of it, I mean, I've been here for a month. Uh, but up until then, I was just at home, you know, and it's been, uh, you know, it's just a, it's such a wave. It's just a it's a constant it's a constant wave that no one ever gets to ride on. And yeah. uh, everybody has to be in the ocean no yeah. to ride the wave. They just have to get hit with the wave over yeah. and over again. Like it. Um, so that's pretty much, that's pretty much what it's been like. So, you know, you just there. you kind of take it for what it is. And, uh, you know, it's it's. It sucks to see how many people are uh, getting destroyed by it. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's uh, it's really, really tough, you know, especially a lot of these businesses and, you know, mm-hmm. these business owners and, you know, entrepreneurs and then just people that want to travel and have yeah. freedom, you know, like, I guess it's just, it's a whole different, it's just a whole different mode. And I think that it, the longer it kind of goes on, the more difficult it, it gets to kind of, you know, what's the best word uh, to kind of uh, get audiences to understand sure. something you know for like day 145 and yeah you know, <laughs> spread. uh so i think it just becomes a little bit more uh, people start to get a little bit restless after a while um mm-hmm. you know and especially as we go into this fall and you start to go into the winter season where people usually want to travel and they want to do things so mm-hmm. it's just been a really interesting experience to kind of see what how this is affecting everything and you know we're one of the lucky productions that are fortunate enough to be able to actually be back shooting when so many have just kicked production until 2021 sure um so we're really really fortunate to um to actually be back doing something so i think for a lot of us um that was really great but even you know here we have tremendous amount of restrictions you know we we're not we don't do, can't go anywhere uh really sure uh, and so it's like you know just go to home, like go home, go to set and go home again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so it's like, you know, we do, we get tested three days a week, you know? And so it's like, they're very, very, um, cautious cause they want to sure. make sure, you know, uh, but you know, it's definitely, this is something that, uh, it's very, very interesting. It's been, a, it's been a quite an experience to, uh, to see, I'll not, I will not miss it. If only we could just run 2020 back again. Like, no, said no one ever. Yeah, <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah. This is one of those things where I'm like, you know, when it's over, it's going to be a great story to tell. You know what I mean? To be like, I survived. You want to know something crazy? There were murder hornets for like a week. Yeah, Suppose I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just, it's like, you can't make, it's like, you can't make this stuff up. It's just so, it's yeah. just, it's so insane. And it's, uh, you know, it's, like I said, it really does feel just like a wave that no one gets to actually ride on. Yeah. Hit by it. just, that's what it feels like. It just like constantly sure. you get up and you're just like spitting sand out of your mouth and there's seaweed in your ear. And you're just mm-hmm. like, make it stop. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, they just yeah. hold fast. We got this. <laughs> yeah. Two more weeks and it'll be done. Oh, okay. That's right. Uh, she should be safe. All right. Let's see what she said. Yeah. Five and a half months later, here we are. I know. Sheesh. You're you're in Montana. I uh, I've always yeah. wanted to go to Montana because I have this Bro. idea of you know big sky country and like, mm-hmm. is it is it crazy? Is it as good as I think it is? It's it's a beautiful. It's a it is a very very beautiful place. I mean it is it is big sky country. It's just it's so you know you can see you know in all the places states that I've been to um you know in the U S it's like you can see the stars so clearly at oh. night and it just. It just blankets, you know, the sky, um, you know, and where we're shooting, which is kind of like in the middle of nowhere, if you will. So there's just not there's not giant city lights and there's not all that. So when it's dark, it's you know, it's dark and you can really see it. So it really is very relaxing, um, you know, and especially when we've been here in years past. It's just a great opportunity, especially a lot of us 
you know, we're in the big cities, either in sure. you know, Los Angeles or, you know, in New York. And so when we kind of come here, it's always been a very kind of tranquil environment, you know, to get away from like the stresses of just the city life of traffic and X, Y, and Z. And so, sure. you know, it's always very, very beautiful to just kind of get out and kind of breathe this fresh air and, you know, gain a couple of years back onto your life. Yeah, I bet. I feel like it's one of those things where like, how can you not have an existential moment of like looking at a sky? Because you've never, right. you don't see a real sky in general, right. you know? No, you don't see it and you don't really know what it looks like. Until yeah. You're looking, oh, that looks right. You sure. know, especially <laughs> if you live in the city, you're just like, you just don't, everyone's so busy and you, your eye light mm-hmm. never really goes past the skyscrapers. Yeah. You can never really get a, a good look at it because the lights are always on, you know? So it really is a, a very, uh, it is a very quiet and very still thing. And, you know, and it's, and it's a, it's a place that you, it allows you to kind of be a little bit more creative because there isn't that many distractions. You don't have, oh, yeah. you know, a, a thousand and one opportunities of things to do. And obviously that's not the case anywhere right now, but like, right. you know, usually in years past, if you, you kind of come out here and you expect it a much slower pace and a little bit more chill and relaxed. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think that's always nice. That always makes for a really nice conducive environment on set as well. I bet. I bet. All right, so where are you from then? I'm from uh, Orange County, California. Really? I yeah. I feel like a lot of people aren't actually from Orange County. A lot of people move yeah. there. It's like I, I'm yeah. in Florida right now, and nobody's okay. local. Everyone's right. from north. I'm not yeah, even from Florida. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so everyone's a transplant. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So when you find someone who actually like lived and grew up there, it's like, oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, I was, I'm one of the, the rare, like, you know, I grew up there, and then I moved to L.A., I lived in L.A. for like a decade, mm-hmm. um, and then just within the past couple of years, I just moved back to Orange County just to have a little bit more of a, a relaxed pace, and also, sure. you know, it's, um, you know, L.A. can is, I think, is a great in certain stages of your life, sure. um, you know, and I think for <laughs> me, like, it got to a point where I was like, okay, I kind of want just a little bit more relaxation, don't mm-hmm. want to feel the pressure to, to be going out all the time, and Totally. Going to this, going to that, and you know, you don't have to kind of be reminded about entertainment all the time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, and that's kind of you know, and it's kind of nice. It's just a little bit more peaceful, and so it's a great because I can kind of go in, do the job, and then leave it, and have that kind of peace of mind, which is really nice for me. Sure, that way you're not constantly inundated with it. You're like you can. Yeah, you know, you gotta, you gotta have a, you have to have an emotional break. You have to you have to be able to to break away from it. Otherwise, it just kind of swallows you up. Sure, sure. So then usually people that are from there don't get into the industry, it seems like, because you're so around it all the time. So like, right. So then when did your interest in like performance start? Uh, mine started when I was young. Mine started when I was like five years old. I was Perfect. always, um, yeah, I was on, uh, you know, I, was, I would do plays and then I did, um, you know, I performed when I was like six in front of like several hundred people when I was singing. Wow. And then um, at that point, I was like, you know, this is something that I, I knew at that point when I'd seen the audiences, their faces, they were just so excited. And I was like, I always knew that that's what I always wanted to do. Sure. And so when I would be in school, you know, I'm not really paying attention. Big, big daydreamer all the time daydreaming. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was always difficult because the teacher was like, we got to do this. And I was like, but I'm going to be an artist. So it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> At six, you know, please. It's just like they would call, you know, they would call my my family or put it on my report cards. Like, you know, he's really smart, but there's just like he just doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't care to pay attention. And it's just like, yeah, it's like, what am I going to do with it? Um, sure. You know, so, Math. <laughs> it, it really, yeah, it really was kind of a thing where, um, you know, as I got older, it, it became it's almost like I like willed myself into like, you have to do this. Cause like, you're just kind of sabotaging everything sure. else. Like, <laughs> uh, and so I was like, you guys are going to support this either way because there are no other options. Right. <laughs> uh, and so, um, you know, and luckily, you know, uh, by the grace of the most high, I've been very blessed to be able to actually, um, for, you know, pursue it, uh, in this way through, of course, you know, everyone goes through their own set of challenges and circumstances, mm-hmm. but it was always something for me. It's like, I would rather struggle doing something that I want to do yeah. other than struggle than doing something that everybody else tells me that I have to do. Cause I can't find the motivation. Absolutely. Um, you know, like even when I was in school, it's like get up at eight o'clock in the morning. I couldn't be bothered with getting up at eight in the morning, but now, <laughs> you know, if they send us a call sheet and they say, okay, well you have to be on set at six thirty in the morning. I can get up at five and be like, okay, sure. we're going to do what we got to do, you know? So oh, it, yeah. just, it just kind of shows that when you kind of, find what you want to do those excuses of all those other things kind of go away because you're actually like yeah this fulfills what i this is fulfilling for me you know 
in these ways and I actually want to do it. And so you feel like you can really pour yourself into it. Yeah. So you just, you just dial into that frequency. Right. Mm-hmm. Did you ever get those yeah. talks when it's like, if you focused on this as much as you focused on that other thing. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, I got that. I mean, and of course, as you got older, like as I got older, it became, you know, even more and more things like, you know, things like that, you know, if you only would have gone to Harvard, you sure. Not, you, done this. <laughs> you know, and, and of course, when you're like 23, 24 and you know, like, you're just eating cup of noodles because you have five dollars <laughs> in your bank account. You know, like okay, sure. I can't, like looking back now, I don't get mad at that because I'm like, yeah, I probably would feel somewhat of the same way as well because it's like yeah. you have friends that are graduating law school and starting their own businesses mm-hmm. and they're doing that. And it's like, well, what are you doing? And it's like, well, I had another audition today, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> what does that mean? You know, it's exactly. Like, so, you know, it becomes the thing where you really have to. Um, you have to really want it and you really have to be understanding about the process. Like I always say, seed time and harvest. Yeah. And so it's like, you 100%. have to fall in love with the plowing process um, and the sweat. And there's oftentimes that people will show up during your plow season and going, I don't see anything there. Yeah. You know, it <laughs> takes a while. You know what I mean? And sometimes it takes a while. Oh yeah. Um, you know, so if you plant a fruit tree, it takes three to five years. You yeah, know, uh-huh. so it's like, you know, these are those types of things that, you know, I've really, applied um spiritually with this type of experience as well as like everything that is worth um getting it takes some time because it's going to also change you in the process absolutely that's a a big importance because as more success comes there needs to be a more maturational process Mm -hmm. you know otherwise you'll spoil it and so there's so many of those things that I, i feel very fortunate to have kind of been able to work through those different phases of my life and then have a much greater appreciation for the things that I have now much more than if I was kind of in the same position I am now when I was like 23 or 24 just don't think I would have the same emotional spiritual wherewithal to really grasp it and to really know what to do with it sure sure and we're in a world now where it's so like glitterized the idea of being an actor you're like oh you know just go there and then you're super famous it's like well no yeah. you don't see the the overnight success is 10 years in the making part it's like, yeah yeah <laughs> it we, is... we, we love that you know we're a microwave society, we're a microwave society yeah you know, and, like and no one's interested in like you know and we all know this as a kid i remember like sitting in my grandma's house you're gonna go over there and make cookies and you do the batter and you do this whole process and then you think that the moment you put the things, you know, yeah. the cookies on the platter, you put it in the oven, you're like, okay, and then the cookies are done. And she's yeah. like, come back in an hour and a half. And you're like, I, that <laughs> might as well be five years. I don't yeah. have that. You know, it's like. You know how busy you know, I am, Grandma? A, yeah, like you're married and you have a child already by the time the cookies are done. And right. it's like, you know, these are, it's those types of things. So it's like you really understand that. And I think that for so many people that are not necessarily in entertainment or looking at it through that lens they really just see the like oh well, and then they said this and then they they did it and it's like it doesn't right. work like that you know only popcorn in the microwave is that quick yeah you know, know. And, it's like, <laughs> and for me anything that is that quick is not worth getting it's not worth it's Agreed. not worth really appreciating and there's no craftsmanship in that mm-hmm. um and i think that you know we have to like for myself it's always especially for people that want to pursue the arts it is a thing where it's like you have to understand why you want to do it because if you're doing it because you just want to be, you know, a celebrity or because you want to be famous or because you want to be rich, well, all of those things come with their own set of circumstances and challenges, but yeah. they're never going to be truly fulfilling nope. because you have to kind of you have to be a full person in yeah. order to go. <laughs> and if you're kind of empty, you'll kind of just take on any and everything, and the next thing you know, you'll get swallowed up mm-hmm. in the entire process. And then you're looking at yourself down the road with kind of all the things that maybe you imagine yourself having, but you're filled with nothing. Yeah. So now you're looking around and you're like, I, you're a shell of yourself. And so it's like, look at everything that you lost to try to get something that can go away like that. Mm-hmm. You know, and to me, it's just, that's, that's not really worth it. That's true. I agree. And the idea is like, in th- well, really, the job of an actor is to audition. You're always auditioning stuff. And almost like the job itself is the reward for the for the hustle that you did along the way, it's it's the it's the full process. It's a it's yeah. always a you're in a constant state of you know. I think that you know the goal for every artist is to be able to you know put together a great content mm-hmm. to be a part of projects that move people and that are edifying in some way. Um, sure. And we can't say that for everything with entertainment that is on because the standard that we have for entertainment is is much different than it was you know, a decade, two, three, four decades ago. Yeah. Um, but I do think that like, 
you know, there's certain artists that it's like, you know, like for me, it's never been about like, oh, I want to be a celebrity. Oh, I want to do this. And I don't want to do that. It's just like you want to it's it's nice to be able to say like, oh, I wanted to do this. And you set out to do it. You've all you know that you've always wanted to do it. Yep. And I always wanted to do it because I love the way that I was able to make people feel. Yes. I loved it because I, and that's why I did musical theater for so long. And it was like you had to drag me. Wild dogs couldn't drag me off yeah. of the stage <laughs> because I loved just because I love the, the energy of an audience and love doing things like that. Um, but it never, it, and everything else was a kind of a byproduct. It was sure. like, I would do it for free if I didn't have bills to pay. Yeah, I you hear know you. I mean? like, that's a lot. The reality of it is it's like, and I think that's kind of a sentiment for, there's a lot of actors that are in television and film that would probably feel the same way. It was like a mm -hmm. lot of them would have just done theater and musical theater, you know, if they didn't have, families and if they didn't have these bills and they didn't live mm -hmm. in a california or in you know in a new york where it's like it's so expensive to just buy a cup of coffee you know it's like sure. so these are those types of things but you know i think that for a, a a good majority of people that are pursuing it they oftentimes have this idea like you were saying that i just show up and then when i get off the plane warner brothers is there and yeah. then i sign contracts <laughs> and i'm looking at tips that i want you know, and then I say yes to this one, and then they drive me to hair and makeup, and then I'm yeah. a star. It's like, yeah, no, it just doesn't, no, it's not like that. Yeah. <laughs> promise you, it's not, promise you it's not like that. Yeah, okay. Oh, man. So w you did a lot of musical theater, so you were singing. Was yeah. Was singing something that you, like, naturally had a knack for or something you had to, like, train to be good at? I'm sure there's um, both. I, I, I was really good – uh, early on when I was younger, I stopped for a while. And then when I came back, I was not good at all. And so I really had to um, train and I was training like eight, nine hours a day, um, hopefully. And so it was just something like I was, uh, I, I was like a pack animal. I would just could not stop. Um, and it was like, it didn't matter what it was, where I was going. Um, you know, even when I was younger and I would take these road trips with my family, they would like, okay, you know, we're going to stop and like go into a grocery store or go into this. I'd be like, I just want to stay in the car because then I can sing. Oh, um, there you go. So all I was doing was just singing. And then that kind of part led me into getting into the opera realm um, where I really wanted to do that. And so and it just gave me such a, a, a foundational core. Like I look at, you know, ballet being the foundation for dancing mm -hmm. and like Shakespeare is the foundation for theater. The way same with the opera is the foundation for music, for, you know, for singing, for vocals. Sure. And so it really became a thing where. It was like I've always been very, very um, enamored and drawn to a lot of things that people are kind of like not, especially that are in my age. Like nobody Same. really cared about opera, but I've always loved it. Yeah. Um, and so I would just when I wasn't singing, I was studying it. And so it just became a, a thing where it was like, this is just what I want to do. Sure. Um, and so I just surrounded myself with people that, you know, were doing that and trained all the time. And then, you know, because of that, like the first three gigs, I think that I booked um, that were like on television were for singing and so hey. it was kind of a, a really nice uh opportunity to kind of like have that payoff because you're not making it like a exorbitant amounts of money you're kind of you know you're going you're doing a gig here and a gig there and mm -hmm. you know but it was but doing that it's like somebody writes you that hundred dollar check and it oh, just yeah. feels so good it you does. know it feels better than the thousand dollar check sometimes because you just know what you poured into it yeah At the end of it, I still, you know still to this day it's some of my best uh, memories are you know are from the stage absolutely there you go there you go it is something about that when you go into the arts like your first paycheck it's like yeah. this 64 dollars. i think i still have mine framed somewhere <laughs> like, yeah it's a, it's a, it is it's beautiful it's a you know it's a beautiful thing i think yeah i think mine was like 75 dollars or something like yep. that yep. um to go and i went and i sang like one song or whatever but it was so beautiful because i was like 16 yeah you know? so there you go awesome because it's like you know, you're making money in a different way and yeah. other people are like, they're working at Carl's, you know, but it's like, mm -hmm. and I get that because it's like, you guys are working, but it was like, to have the ever to have the opportunity to make money doing something that nobody ever thought that you would ever be able to make money doing. Yeah. Um, so it's, it definitely was very, very gratifying. It definitely was uh, uh, something that really kind of catapulted me and wanted me to continuously kind of pursue it um, in the way that I have been. Sure, sure. And also, you can officially call yourself a professional after that moment. You know, yes, there's like, yes. you know, a professional is someone who does something 
for money. And you're like, well, yeah. <laughs> look yeah. at this paper. <laughs> it is. It's especially as long as you, um, you know, keep yourself humble, yep. you know, and then all of a sudden you don't try to price yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, all right. Like That's you're right. a professional, but like <laughs> once you get into the professional building, there's levels to the professional building. Exactly. And so, like, yes, you're, in the, you're in the building. However, you just walked in. So exactly. Let's not yeah. Where my CEO <laughs> office is. We just let you in. Don't show them your 75 check and be like, I yeah. believe it's 150 now. That's how this works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think this is, I think, with inflation, just because I'm a professional now. Exactly. Uh, yeah, whatever <laughs> I decide it to be. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. But it is a beautiful thing. And I think that for anybody that's pursuing it, I think it's like, allow those type of like smaller things to be the goal because mm -hmm. those things begin, like those things will roll into other things. And it gives you a confidence. It gives you it an does. air. It doesn't make you kind of grasp at this idea um you know it actually makes it very palpable and very real for you yeah uh, you know because you actually know like hey somebody did think that i was worth you know something to perform yeah and i think that even getting that is something that's very very emotionally gratifying and really can give you a confidence when you are going into auditions and stuff like that because you're now actually find yourself as also being worthy because nobody's going to invest in your you if you're not willing to invest in yourself it's true you know it's, so it's like you have these types of things where i think that emotionally that can really take a big weight off of your shoulders when you've had these like you know smaller opportunities in the beginning absolutely and then it's just about like maintaining the race you know right. so much of it is like just keep going because the only way for sure you're not going to make your dreams happen is if you give up because there's always right. a chance if you keep on going yeah, you you always you always know that you know when you when you stop running, you know what the result of you not running anymore. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing any more of the track. Exactly. You know? And of course, it's like yes, there's going to be the hurdles and this, but it's of always been a thing. Like every test that you have is supposed to turn into a testimony, not supposed to turn into your failure. Agreed. And so it's like you know when you do these things, and that's why I always stress the importance of it's like before you even get onto the racetrack understand why you're getting onto the racetrack in the first place yeah you know, because you'll never be able to have the endurance it's like you know when mm -hmm. you see the olympics and they're doing like you know the 1600 meters and 2400 meters they're not coming out of the gate like you saying bolt because it's like dude there's a lot of laps that we got to do yeah. here. you <laughs> know what i mean it's like just relax because then at the end when we really need you to push you're like i don't have anything in the tank and so mm -hmm. it's like emotionally you have to prepare yourself for the rejection for the hardships for the frustrations for the downsides for the nose i mean you're always gonna in the entertainment world you're always gonna hear way more no's than you ever will yeses so you mm -hmm. have to redefine um you know what your wins and losses are and if you look at your wins as only being when you book something well you're never going to be in a good space but if sure. you can look at it from what did i learn did i train better did i do a different method how mm -hmm. am i growing what things do i have outside of this that are also allowing me to grow um, to bring something back to this, you know, yes. so there's so many different avenues of the way that you can redefine wins and losses that I think that so many of us would benefit from um, as you're kind of pursuing this this industry in that way um, that can really help you for the emotional longevity and the emotional race of it all. I agree. I agree. How are you at auditioning? <laughs> Man, uh, I asked the hard ones, Denim. <laughs> terrible. I was ter <laughs> terrible. I was you know, when early on, it was like I would get when I was younger, I have like tremendous amount of anxiety. You know, I, my heart would race and I would stutter a lot. And shake, um, and it's like I couldn't look anybody in the eyes like I was just terrified. And as I got older um, in my, you know, when I started getting into like my 20s and stuff like that, I still would have this tremendous amount of anxiety. But I realized as I kind of hit like my mid twenties, like late twenties and, and kind of going in, I realized it was because I was like lacking an identity for myself. Oh. And so it was almost like I'm going to put on this show, but I don't really know what the show is. So you're going to pull this, like there's going to be a show time sure. and the curtain is going to be there, but I have no idea what the set is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. I don't know the line. And I used to look at it all the time as like having these dreams where you're getting ready to perform and then you walk out on stage and forget your lines. Oh. When I was doing musical theater, that was, oh, that's everybody's kind of biggest anxiety is like you go in and then you're like, what happens if I get on stage and I don't remember? Now there's 300 people all looking at you, a thousand people all looking at you waiting for you to say something. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like that type of anxiety. And so as I kind of got older and started kind of coming more into myself and just being like, 
being a full person outside of this, mm-hmm. then I, it really allowed you just to be able to look at a page and just walk in and just do what you do. You go sure. and you do what you do and you go home. But it's like, I think that we also give so much power to people that don't know us. And so then right. we're giving them the, like the key, like here are all the keys to my emotional state here. You take them and they're going to think about you for five minutes and then they're right. done. Right. Like <laughs> it's true. But, it's but true. We're destroyed for a week. You know what I mean? And they've already moved on. It's like their job is they want you to win. You know? right. So it's like I think we, we look at it so much as like this giant shark that's like going in the water. It's like, dude, it's not a shark. It's fine. It's a dolphin. Just get yeah. in there and swim with it. It's fine. Yeah. You know right. I mean? and so I think that once I was able to get out of that mindset that everything just slowed down. And I studied a lot. I was watching these great actors in film that were just doing things with their eyes and not running around and doing all that. Because especially with me being in theater, I had so much energy and I was so animated and anything you felt, you could just go and do right well, with television, with film, whatever you felt, you have to be able to do it here in your eyes yeah. or just open your reaction and your whole, this doesn't get to play. So that also was a major thing because it was also like, do you even know how strong or powerful you are? Because it almost becomes as a crutch, yeah. you know, like I always used to know like, okay, I can lean on this. I can lean on those things in theater. And now you don't have anything to lean on. You're naked. Because you, the camera's sure. not going to miss anything. Yeah. You know? And so I think that once you kind of get more comfortable with yourself, um, if that was for me, when I was able to start going to auditions, it became a much easier deal for me. You just go and do the job and move it because there'll be another one. And then sure. it'll be fine. You know? And so it's like, don't make it seem like I'm only going to get one chance to hit a home run. You'll be fine. Hit a single. You'll be okay. There you go. There you go. I, I wonder that as well for people that go from theater to film because you have to bring it way smaller because theater is all about play to the last person in the back row. And it's like, mm-hmm. but with a camera, it, it captures thought. <laughs> You're yeah. like, oh, it's, man. It's, it's complete internal work. You're doing it's, – it's, it's almost the exact opposite in a way. And I think that for people that – I think for me it was a great experience because I really learned how to – be animated and be kind of free as a child and kind of have that opportunity. But then as I've gotten older, it's about learning how to work from the inside out, which is really how we should be doing things in, in life yeah. in general, <laughs> um, you know, instead of just kind of running around and just saying things. And then it's like, well, why did you say that? I was like, I don't know. It's like, there's no thought process. It's like, sure. I think that as an artist that for me, that's something that has helped. And so during that downtime, that, those are things that I'm all, you're also studying, you look mm-hmm. at about being internal and being comfortable and confident. And I think that that's what really helps because, like you said, it's like it's it's so small. You know, it's yeah. here. You're in this little box and uh, it's going to catch everything and there's no lying. You can't lie to the camera um, mm-hmm. about what you, you either have it or you don't. True. And so, you know, it's kind of like your job is to tell the best truth that you have with the lie that you have. Yeah. And that's like <laughs> the weird thing you have with, with film. Because it is. It's like we're not any of those people, yeah. but our job is to make you believe fully that we're those people without question. Yep. And I think that and that takes a certain amount of work where there's not the bells and whistles and all those other things. And so it does. It takes a completely different um, style and approach. But I think it's something that everybody can benefit from either way, depending on whatever you decide to do. For sure. For sure. I imagine it might even be better to go the route that you went because to have an excess and then be able to dial it back. I imagine right. will be much more difficult to have this and then try and make it much bigger. You're trying, you're trying to pull out. Oh yeah. I mean, so many yeah. of people that I've had, it's like, they've always would rather have much more and be able just to rein it in, rein yep. it in. Um, we see that with athletes a lot, you know, mm-hmm. where it's just like, they kind of just go and do whatever they want, but they'll take that other than somebody that they have to keep imploring. Yeah. To like just make the throw. If you throw an interception, it doesn't matter. Just throw it. And it's sure. like, no, they just want to do five yard dunk. I was like, we'll never win anything. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, like, you, know, like, you know, and so I think that, you know, and it was, but it's also like, as a person, you also have to understand that they will yell at you and they'll get frustrated and you'll get annoyed because mm-hmm. they want you to be, not be afraid of an interception, but they also don't want that to be 50% of your yeah. game. You know? So it's like, you know, so there is a process that yep. you do have to understand that like, yes, it's, it's better because you have more to bring in, but you also have to be confident in yourself to be able to bring it in and be equally as effective, right? Sure. Like it's still, be, you know, you can throw it, but still be accurate, mm-hmm. you know, still place it where we need you to place it. And so then it becomes, you become more of a tactician. Sure. Um, and for me as an artist kind of getting more into the eye work and stuff like that, it's just was like, Oh, 
it's not that I'm a small actor at that point. It just becomes you're more tactful and you're able to do something that is um, longevity, right? Like, it's like, I don't need to go out there, roll out of the pocket and then take a hit, take a hit, take a hit. It's like slide. Because right. then you'll be able to do this for multiple seasons as opposed to having three good seasons and you'll never, you'll be a backup for the rest of your life. It's like sure. these, those types of things that if you can really focus on them, they can really be beneficial for you to have a job here, have a job there, stay on the thing here mm-hmm. because you're, you're tactful and you can kind of slide into any type of position and that's a really good thing to have. I think so. I think it's important as well to continue to learn. Always be learning. Always add more tools to your actor's toolbox kind of thing because you'll limit yourself and then it'll come a day when you need something else and you don't have it. And you can't pull, you know, and you can't pull from it. You know, yeah. and, 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 like it's like anything, you know, mentally our, our minds are the same way. It's like anything that you don't use, it atrophies. And yeah. so it becomes much more difficult to draw on these things when you're not exercising them constantly. If you're not challenging yourself constantly, then it just kind of goes away. And then you get frustrated just like people do when they go to the gym. They go to the gym strong for a year, mm-hmm. take a month off, and then go back and start to try to lift weights as if they were going to the gym yeah. for a year. <laughs> then they're frustrated, they're irritated, they're mad, and then they just stop going instead of sitting there and going, okay, let me do something that is for the long haul. I look at the same way with people that do diets. It's like, do something that you can do continuously, not right. something that you can only do for 30 days or for 60 days. And mm-hmm. I think the same way with like the arts, with any type of thing of like, find something that you can do over the course of the long haul. You can make your career by hitting singles. Mm-hmm. You can do types of things like, and there's always, somebody always needs that. You don't always need to be a person that comes up and goes for the home run because you will strike out far more times than you'll ever hit a home run. Yep. And so it's like, these are those types of things that for me, I was like, oh, as you get older, have a little bit more maturation. You start to surround yourself with other people that mm-hmm. are kind of, are yoked in a different way. Elders that can really instill that type of wisdom and knowledge. And you kind of see like, oh, yeah, it is fine. Like It's true. Yeah. It's you know, absolutely true. Kind of settle into it. And then it's just it's fine. After that, you're just like, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, it's it's so true. And like that's that's what I find. You see a lot of people that have longevity is they've learned that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just yeah. it's it's such a game. It's such a game that, like, you learned it. And life is a game, really, when you think about it. There's so many things. So was there there something specifically, because you said you love musical theater so much, was there something that made you want to make the jump to screen? I always wanted to do, um, like, I always wanted to be on film, especially in film. Sure. Um, You know, I just always loved doing it. I just always wanted to see what it would be like to ever you know have that type of opportunity Mm -hmm. um and so it really it kind of got to a point um you know when i was like 17 18 19 years old where it was like okay are you gonna move to new york and full you know and kind of pursue the whole broadway thing uh, Mm off broadway thing are you gonna try to do musical theater tours um you know what is it that you're gonna do and you know the the one great thing uh, that my pops always told me was like you know the more things that you have the more opportunities you always have to be able to work so it's like, point. even if you don't, we do this television and film thing, even if that doesn't work, you have this whole other opportunity as an artist doing theater, doing musical theater, doing opera, you know, you can sing jazz and just do a jazz lounge. It's like, there's sure. always an opportunity to be able to do your art. And so it really became a thing where it was like, yeah, like I want to do this. I wasn't prepared necessarily for how difficult it was going to be, um, especially to break in. I wasn't prepared. Um, sure. And it felt like when I was doing musical theater, it felt like I couldn't miss. It felt like every audition that I was going to go into, I was going to book it and I was going to be a lead and, you know, mm-hmm. or I was going to be a, a, a tremendous, I play a tremendous role in it. Sure. And then when I got into this, it was like, wow, this is, you know, I went years and I didn't hear anything, you know, just sure. no after, not even hearing no, you just don't hear anything. Right. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. You know, it becomes a, you know, it, that really wears on you, especially when you've got to come from this high. And I so, bet. but again, it was, Sea time and harvest, everything's about preparing the mental state and the spiritual mm-hmm. state. And it really is a test to be like, okay, well, now we're going to really figure out, like, why you did want to get into this. Did you get into it because you want to keep up with the Joneses and because you want to do this or because you want to do that? Mm-hmm. Or did you do it because you actually want to experience the art in this way and see what it's like to have the art opportunity in this way? And now we're really going to do that because – if you just wanted to kind of hit the home run and now you don't get to do it, you'll quit and you'll be done with it. For sure. But Or you'll sit there and you'll go, okay, well, the first time I ever touched on base was because I got walked. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> At least I know I'm on the base, you know, and now Absolutely. I get to see from a different perspective. 
I get to see what the batter's doing, the signals. I, everything is different. So I think that at every stage, you then sort of start to look at things. And you have to say, okay, I got this little opportunity. It's not everything, but it's something. It's a, it's a step up. The view is always going to be different from up here. So mm-hmm. what things am I seeing that's different from there? And then once you've done that, go to the next one and go to the next one. It's about building that, again, like we we're talking about this longevity. Um, and that was something that took me a, a really long time. Um, from that transition from theater into television and film, um, I probably went like five or six years without booking anything. Um, sure. You know, with that, but it was something where I was like, I was always learning, and I knew that any time that that light bulb like turned on, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, this is like a solar panel. It's just never gonna go out. Like I'll be sure. fine. <laughs> so it was just like getting all the tools to make it and get it together and fastening it, and then when it kind of clicked, then I was like, oh, I get it. It's it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. It's very easy. Like sure. just relax, chill. you know, the work is already done and now just trust yourself, which is really hard for a lot of us to do is mm-hmm. to do that part with the trusting ourselves part. For sure. Especially when you're getting a lot of crickets. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's hard, you know, cause they yeah. don't call you and tell you, no, nope. well, we didn't book you because of this. They just don't call. Yeah. Uh, you yep. know, and if you're terrible, <laughs> then they'll call your agents or their manager and be like, I can't believe you wasted our time with having them in there. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, uh-huh. and so, you know, it is a thing where you just you have to just understand that it's always for the next thing. You're not necessarily auditioning for this role. You're auditioning for something that the casting director could be doing in the future. Yeah. You know, and so you're just trying to sow these seeds so that maybe they see you two or three times. And they're like, man, look at this progression. Now we'll give him a chance. We'll give him an under five. Yeah. You know, we'll just let him be too long. And now all of a sudden, it's at least something. You at least get to be on set. You at least get to start to see it. Then it starts again, like we were talking about at the beginning. It starts to become palpable. It becomes mm-hmm. something that you're not only just like, oh, I hope. Now you at least have it tangibly. And now that gives you a little bit more to like, okay, I think I can I think I can do this. Now I got a little bit of something. And that mm-hmm. way you're not overwhelmed. It's better. You're not overwhelmed. There's not large expectations on you. It's just enough where you can hone in all of your anxiety and just get your two lines out. Yep. You get paid a little bit of money, and then you just learn for the next one. Exactly. I find a lot of it's timing as well. You know, it's mm-hmm. like luck is preparation meets opportunity kind of stuff. And right. it's like if right. you had these sure. opportunities way back when, when you were still preparing, you wouldn't have been prepared right. for it, and it wouldn't have snowballed the way it did. And then you burn – well, and then those bridges are gone. Then that then mm-hmm. that train station, that, that train leaves because it's like you, you just weren't prepared. Exactly. And so it's like, you know, be very careful what you're hoping and praying for because you, you'll get it and then you don't ever think that you have to change. Oftentimes it's you're going to get what you want, but you have to also raise your game. You also have to raise your level up to it. Mm-hmm. And so it's like we so, so much of us, we hope and we wish and we this and, and then we get it. And it's like, but you didn't want to do it that you didn't want to change. You didn't yeah. want to work. You just wanted it to just fully encompass you and then it's fine. It's like life doesn't work like that with anything. If you want to do mm-hmm. radio, if you want to do podcasts, if you want to do that, there's there's seed time and there's harvest and there's work and there's this. Just because they like your idea doesn't mean that people are gonna bang down your door or back up a Brinks truck, you yep. know, and dump it <laughs> whatever you want. It's like it doesn't work like that, you know. But we kind of this younger generation especially has been very kind of trained to just think that like, yeah, I can just say this and it just happens because when you want access to something with social media, you can just go to it and then you have access to it. True. But then when you try to apply that same thing to the physical world, it doesn't usually yeah. work like that. <laughs> yeah. And then the encouragement comes in and now you feel self-conscious and all these other things. And it's like, yeah, like these are those things that you have to understand that like there's a preparation and there's a process mm-hmm. to all of it. You can't just say, I want it. And then we're giving it to you. I mean, my, my, uh, my dad said something great. One of the times this guy came up to him and was like, hey, man, like, you know, next time you're doing something, you know, like that, put me on. I'd love to do that. And he said, like, you know, oh, let me ask you a question. He said, um, you know, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, you know, would you ever go up to a brain surgeon and say, <laughs> hey, man, I really love you doing brain surgery. Next time you're doing one, you know, put me in a clock and let me go in there and do that. And he sure. was like, well, no, of course I would never do it. He's like, he's like, why would I do that? He's like, so then why would you also think, that for something that I've been working and training to do my entire life, that you can just come in off the street and then just say, throw me in it and then you'll, it'll be fine. Yeah. And then it really kind of sat in and marinated. And it was like, everything that we do has a preparation, has a technicality to it, has time that's spent, a, a uh, emotional, a spiritual, a physical demand that is into it, where you can't just say, I want to do it and then just pop in and then think that you'll be able to do it. You may be able to do it once well, but can you do it? multiple times because all mm-hmm. of this is not about how many 
can I have one good interview? It's like, how many great interviews can you put in back to back to back to back? Exactly. How many shows can you, you know, like, it's about the longevity game. It's not about just hitting one and mm-hmm. being a kind of a flash in the sand because what are you going to do with that? Exactly, exactly. And then if you keep up the race, eventually you have these great roles that pop up, such as Colby and Yellowstone. Dude, what a role. Yeah. What a role. Yeah. Those are the kind of stuff like you hope one day you get, and then it yeah. happens. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, very, very, yeah, you know, being able to be, uh, um, you know, on Yellowstone from, you know, from the beginning, yeah. uh, you know, from, you know, from season one, episode one, um, and then the progression of, you know, of Colby, mm-hmm. you know, it really is something because as an actor, your, your whole goal is to just be on a TV series in general. Yep. Um, you know, and I always remember watching, you know, shows when I was younger and then like you get the, you know, the DVD box sets. I'm like, dude, this would oh, be yeah. so cool. You know, and then all of a sudden you're like, you're in this and it's always interesting because it's like, you know, seasons one and two, it gave me such a great opportunity because it was so new for me of being on a series. Yeah. Um, and, so, but it gave me such a great opportunity to really kind of sit back and learn and to study and to watch the greats like Kevin Costner and Taylor Taylor Sheridan doing the, yeah. the way that they work, how they maneuver. Legends. And so then when the opportunities came, you felt so comfortable because you're like, you're already with these people all the time. They want you to win. And so it's just like, it's been such a beautiful um, kind of progression, um, you know, in my, not only in my life, but also in the show with Colby's character, which I... I, I love him dearly. He's just such a he's just such a, a calm, cool, and collected dude. I just I love it. Uh, you know, because Taylor's really allowed us to really uh, take advantage of our characters and really just pour in whatever we have into them. Like he didn't confine them and block you know box them off. And so it's been really nice to really allow um, to have the opportunity to explore um, and then to have a, a great uh, screen partner this season as yeah. Jennifer Landon to play Peter. Um, really really fun we had a lot of fun this season i bet i bet and like yeah just as an actor i mean you you some people go their entire careers and not have a role where they can really spread their wings out and like have scene partners like you've had i mean it's just it's insane it's insane. Yeah, I, I I tell people all the time. I feel like I've gained twenty years of you know of television entertainment, uh, you know, education by being able to be around these great actors and these yeah. great artists. And you know, we have so many great directors that have come on. Um, you sure. know, we have great producers, and so being able to be on a show that's like this that has been um, such a success, um, it's mm-hmm. really really awesome because you just you you don't you just never you just never know you know like you said. There are so many people that will go their entire careers and never get the opportunity, um, you know, that that I've been very um, fortunate to be able to have. Um, but I really appreciate it because, you know, I also understand the journey and the process um, sure. up into this point. And so I always look back and I'm like, yeah, I, I feel very, very grateful and be able to be going into our fourth season um, of this show that, you know, the audience has really responded to us so beautifully. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, they're very, very excited and always helping us break new records every mm-hmm. single week and every summer uh and so it's always it's just really really nice it's really a cool thing to be able to be a part of such an amazing show and an amazing ensemble cast yeah and like the th- the other thing is i think is a testament to you as an actor is you're able to hold your own you know what i mean like that's not easy with the caliber of these people you're working with and like dude you're right up there it's amazing Thanks. it's amazing to watch I, your work I, I, I appreciate that it's a you know we have a great um, you know, the great thing about this show is that, you know, it's so atmosphere based, you know, yeah. and so you really get to be, you know, in the elements. And I think that um, it's really helpful. Taylor really helps us in that way as well, because you kind of uh, you don't have to kind of make anything up, you know, like when sure. you're in the water, you're really in the water. Yeah. You know, when you're like <laughs> when you're riding a horse, you're really riding the horse. Like, sure. You're really like, so it's like there's all these different elements. That I think it almost kind of loosens you up in a way because you're also just like. No, I'm here. Like you're actually in these elements. You're actually doing those things, and so you sure. know, I always appreciate somebody that you know um, is gets to be fully engaged into the character, and you know, because it is, it's a, it's a good amount of work, and but it's 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 a wor- type of work that allows you to really feel like, man, like you earned this today. You yeah. know, and every time you go to the set, because it's so physical and it's so this, and so I just love that, and I think Taylor um, loves that about this show as well, because there's not another show on television that's like this show True. Um, that is so physical that's on the horses that has this Western feel, um, but does it in the way that we do it. And I think that that's what makes it so fun. I think that's why all of us, when we get an opportunity to go on to set uh, season one, we probably didn't realize like 
what like how successful the show would be because we're like we've never seen anything like this it's like it almost felt like the the cast of star wars the first time that they're going to the set of george lucas and like yeah uh and so there's just like a weird english guy in this gold thing yeah. <laughs> and there's like this guy that's like what how is this gonna work sure. you know and then they don't really you know and then all of a sudden you see it you're like yeah no we yeah oh. no yeah, <laughs> yeah you know and so then it, it helps you bring so every year we're like reinventing ourselves and bringing more and more and i think that's really awesome to have the opportunity to be on a show where we get to where we get to do that yeah and i i'm such a massive taylor sheridan fan i mean he like he hits them all hell or high water is like one of the my all-time favorite movies and then you got wind river and it's like dude yeah. and he was on like yeah. sons of anarchy oh, in yeah. season one i was like the cop from sons of anarchy is like one of the best creators i was like what yeah and it's, then it's a boy cool. yeah and like you know him and john litson who was also on uh, yeah. sons of anarchy and so, you know, Crazy. Being, that's how I found out about this was because of a film that I was doing before with Tommy Flanagan. Oh, perfect. Um, who, who was also on that. And he was the one that was telling me, it's like, yeah, there's a show, you know, that my friends are, are getting ready to put on. And, you know, and so you're like, you got to call your people. I think it would be great for this, you know, opportunity. Dude. And I was like, okay. And so, you know, but it was, again, it was one of those things where at every stage and at every level, you know, you want to be as prepared as you possibly can because sure. you don't ever know who you're doing a scene with. You don't mm-hmm. ever know who you're auditioning for, you know, or what you're auditioning for. Because you, if I did that scene with him in this movie that we did, and it was just terrible, you know, he's never going to ask me to be like, hey, call sure. to see if you get an audition. You know, so it became this thing where it was like, yeah, that, that mindset was definitely the right mindset to have. And something that I just knew, it was like, yeah, let's just keep rinsing and repeating this type of thing and work well. And now you have this opportunity where you're working with these different directors on the show. And now it's like you never know what they will go on to do and what they'll, you know, what they'll be creating in the future that they might also call you up for, you know, because they've had an opportunity to work with you here. So it's like, you have this, you start to start to see this kind of very Mm -hmm. um, ecosystem of work, if you will. And then you start to kind of figure out like, Oh, if you really do this right and have the right attitude and the right, and the right work ethic, there really is an opportunity to have some longevity here. And, you know, and like we said, like that's, that's kind of the goal with anything that you do. Sure. That's crazy. I didn't realize Tommy Flanagan was the one that told Yellowstone. What a small world. Yeah, well, so, well, so he was on, so Tommy Flanagan, so he, we did this film together called Chickasaw Rancher. Yes. And so I had a, uh, a scene, I had a really dramatic scene with him, um, and he was coming on, everybody kind of knew. I didn't really watch Sons of Anarchy at the time, mm-hmm. and so they were like, yeah, Tommy Flanagan, Tommy, and I was like, I have no idea who that is, guys. Like, cool. <laughs> you know, but they were like going crazy, and I was like, oh, okay. And so then when I did the thing, he was telling me because I didn't know like Taylor Sheridan and you know John Linson and all these other people. And so, sure. um, you know, at that time, it was like Kevin Costner had just signed on to be an executive producer of Yellowstone. We didn't even know that he was starring in it. We had no idea. Oh, right. And so he was just friends with them and they just would call, you know, and they're just talking and chit chatting, you know. And so then when, you know, we did this scene afterwards, we were driving back to base camp and he was like, yeah, you know, like there's, they, you know, we're, they're doing this thing. It's another cowboy thing. Like you, you got to do it. You got to. Yeah. Got to call them. You got to get your reps to call them and see if you can get in there for an audition. And so it was like, yo, that's like, it was really cool to be able to be seen in that way again of like another actor wanting to invest um, a contact, an opportunity in you. Sure. Of another thing of like, hey, you know, like because of this work, like, dude, you you could do something on there. And then you know, it's I've been so grateful that you know Taylor and, and John and Viacom and Paramount really embraced me and really gave me a, a phenomenal shot to really begin to like you know up up the game and up my career in this way and it's been you know it's really been a fascinating thing and a beautiful ride to be able to be on i bet i bet and you were ready for it you know that's the thing and it yeah, sh- it shows in the work like i i think that's one of the most inspiring things about it is when you see or, or hear about the long road and then you see the payoff at the end it's like mm, you kept going that's what i'm talking about you know yeah it, feel, it feels you know it, it's definitely a good thing it's something that you can really appreciate um and it's something that you you internalize it and you go like yeah like if we just like just stay in this stay in this pocket you know what yep. i mean like don't mm-hmm. don't allow yourself to get too up or too down about anything and then you know what what righteous seeds can you sow from this you know Absolutely. and it's also then about like don't just take in um you know to the storehouse also understand that you can take into the storehouse but then what things can you do from the storehouse afterwards mm-hmm. and so that's been these types of things like every time you get something it's about appreciating and taking it in but then also looking outwardly and going like what things can we also do to then be able to help educate and edify 
um, on the back end. And, you know, mm -hmm. we're in this kind of realm with, where people care about entertainers because they are on TV and somehow that makes yeah. them leaders. But yeah. it's not very much <laughs> in a way of like, you know, look at their fruit. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. you'll know the fruit they bear. And so it's like, you know, we have to do, uh, I feel like a, a different responsibility um, in communities and stuff like that to make sure that like, what we are talking about and the things that we are promoting the things that we are doing are things that are going to be edifying and educational and things that generationally will be able to help in the long run, not just like so that you can get something sold. Sure. I, I think that's important. And I think that shows a lot about your character as well in <laughs> both character and character. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's important. It's important to have that responsibility and to recognize that and then to do good with it. You know what I mean? Like that's how you change the world, stuff like that. You know, it's being the change. You know, one, 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 you know, you, you always think is like, if you can affect one person, yeah. you know, then hopefully they do the same thing. And so that just becomes, that just becomes really what it is at the end of the day. And it's like, you know, we're, we're, we have such an opportunity doing what we do. It's like, it's something that, you know, we get to show up and play make believe we can, you know, I guess it's like, we can make it as difficult as possible. We're not doing brain surgery. Sure. Uh, you know, like it's a, you know, it is a, it's a great, it is a great thing, but like, we also, I think, the, the perspective of things has to also remain intact, you know, sure. and I think that it's like you have the opportunities where you can enrich other avenues in life as well. That is not just about kind of like consume more of me, uh, you know, yeah. like and I think that oftentimes <laughs> that can be a trap that you can fall into oh, uh, yeah. because you've, you've seen it, you know, you've seen it. And when you're younger, you think mm -hmm. that that's the identity of what success is and you do that. And then it's kind of like, but that's not really fulfilling. And then what are you leaving behind? You True. know what I mean? And so it's like, for me, it's more so about like, you know, when you, if you, I always knew that if I was ever blessed to have any type of platform, mm -hmm. to be able to use the platform, have the opportunity to use the platform to have some education and to be able to put it in a way that is not in this like far off thing that's so difficult to get where you feel like you have to, you know, go to the moon to get it or, you know, sure. walk to the end of the earth to get it. It's like, no, like everyone's going to have a struggle and you're going to have hard times and downtimes. But so much of this is like, if you follow what your spirit is leading you towards and you stay obedient to those things, you're going to get a hundred percent of the return on mm -hmm. whatever your investment is, no matter what happens. Agreed. And so whatever you put in is exactly what you're going to get out of it. So when we're looking at it, you're like, I don't have a lot. Well, how much did you put in? You know? know. <laughs> and so it's like, you gotta, you gotta be willing to kind of go all in on yourself, especially when you're looking around. And you're like, I'm not getting a lot of people that are wanting to invest in me. It's like, well, you have you, you know, right. like, I don't, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, maybe that just has to be enough for right now. And sure. then everybody else will come and be like, oh, I always knew and this, that, third. It's like, yeah, okay, great. You know, mm -hmm. but you're first and foremost, you need to believe in yourself and be full, um, full of everything that you believe in and be willing to pour that in and be able to block all the noise out and just pursue it um, mm -hmm. and let the chips fall where they may after that. I think so. I think so. And it'll, it comes out in the work. It's exactly like you said, you will 100%, especially with hard work specifically, you will always get a return on it. It may not be the exact thing you thought you were going to get, but at right. the very least you're getting right. that experience under your belt, right. which will turn into other things, right. which is just right. important always, about perseverance. Always. It's crazy. Always, you know, it's like you go when you're starting a garden, you don't just plant one fruit, yeah. you <laughs> don't just plant one vegetable, right? You're planting multiple things. You're like, Hey, you know, mm -hmm. if three or four of these things sprout up, then, then we're good. Just like any business, they're like, yeah, if we get 5% of our, of our of our base, we're doing great business. That's 5%. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? like, baseball, you can be the highest played person in the world and do 30% of a good job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's so true. It's like, we it's true. You know, really, like, really put things into perspective and really understand that it's just about, like, continue to just stay on that grind, continue to whatever it is that you're you're investing in. It's not about, like, oh, I have to have 100% of everything. It's like, no sow those seeds and continue to nurture them and be prepared because mm -hmm. you may come in. I didn't come in thinking that, Oh, my breakthrough will be doing the cowboy world. I thought it would probably be sure. like in an office, like kind of like <laughs> an IT nerd or something like that. Right. But then it was like, well, now there's this cowboy opportunity and you're like, yeah, never really saw that as enough, but here you are. You know, it becomes those types of things that you just don't really know. But if you just continue to pursue it and then you don't, or you're not stubborn and prideful and go, well, no, that's not the way that I imagined it looking. And then sure. you just allowed to pass by. Well, then you'll be sitting in the same place a year from now going, well, what if I had this? And how come I don't have that? It's like you did have that, but you didn't want that. You know, so exactly. we, there's a humbling experience that goes along in the process as well. For sure, for sure. And being open to opportunities and like talking about the multiple layers you have as a performer, 
at the same time of Yellowstone, you're also in good trouble, which has, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Elijah probably has the best wardrobe in television history. Everything is just, come on, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. Elijah. And so, yeah, like, uh, Colby, Elijah, you would not think that they would be the same person able to bring both of them to life so truthfully. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, yeah, Good Trouble was a, you know, it was a great experience to be able to have, uh, you know, especially in the, my, my, my learning process of, you know, in my life. And, you know, the, the people at Good Trouble were so welcoming, especially because they, you know, they had already, they're on their second season and they, you know, mm -hmm. before that they were pretty much doing the fosters for like seven or eight seasons, whatever it was, sure. you know, and so they already kind of built it base. And so to be able to be welcomed, um, you know, with that cast, with that crew, um, you know, in something that is so, um, where there's so many people that are so engaging with that, with that base as well, sure. um, which is, really, which is really something. And I think that for me as an artist, um, it was really something that was, a. uh, uh it was really nice to be able to like ex spread in that way mm -hmm. um, and find these this different avenues and then find where I fall in the middle of that. And so, sure. you know, it, definitely, it was definitely a really, really uh, uh, informative uh, process and uh, a really good, it was a really good for me, uh, like as a man to be able to kind of experience those things. And uh, sure. I was able to do a lot from it. Did you actually cut his hair? How do you, how do you do that stuff? Because there's a scene where his Elijah cuts Gail's yeah, hair. Yeah, I did, like, cut, I did cut his hair um, the first time. Okay. On like a couple of minutes the first time. And then, you know, they take them and then, sure. you, know, do the, you know, do the whole thing. But I did do it a couple of times. And it was, you know, Tommy was already, uh, I think they kind of just wrote that in because he had already had long hair and he was just like wanted to cut it anyways. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like, oh, well, there's a great opportunity here, you know, to have this. You know, we'll just make it, and it just becomes a little bit more endearing. Sure. Um, you know, of a process, I guess. And so, uh, you know, it was cool. You know, it's something that you wanted to do, and you know, they they wrote it in for them. So, you know, yeah, it's a, just a great. You know, a lot of a lot of really talented artists, you know, that are on there doing, you know, doing that work. And so, being you know, being able to kind of explore that universe for a moment uh, was was sure. definitely an interesting experience. And you get to be one of those characters that shows up, makes an impact, and then you're like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. You just you know, and you get people, you know, all the time. Like, are you gonna go back? Are you gonna be doing this and doing that? It's like you did what you did, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, you said you said what he said, you know. And so it's always funny because like I would walk around and people would be like Elijah, and I was like, huh? Like I knew that you were bad, and I'm like, no, but I'm good. Like, I'm, I'm fine. Like, you're just, oh, you're yeah, not I'm denim. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Like in the middle of Chicago, I have no idea what's happening. Just finding your kids <laughs> trying to get some food. You're like, I'm what? I'm a bad person. Okay, great. That's I always right. knew you were bad, and I was like, oh, uh, oh, Elijah. Okay, great. Right. Uh, and so you know, it's you know, it's, it's. I think it's it's a thing where you know when fans get very very invested. I think that's like you know, it's part of the art in that way that if you can get them to fully invest, then I guess you've probably done your job a little bit. That's right. I mean, you did it, you know. If you, if you did not do a good job, you would not be getting any responses. <laughs> true. That is, uh, that's very true. It would be, uh, yeah, which would then definitely been a very strange experience. Yeah, true, uh, But, true. you know, it was, uh, I'm, I'm glad to have been able to do that and been able to kind of see these different networks and have those opportunities. And then, you know, sure. you take from it, you grow and you learn and, uh, you know, I think that that's as in, in anything that you do in this art, I think that it's you, it starts to become like um, an accumulation of certain experiences and things that you mm -hmm. take, things that you um, things you're like, OK, you did that. And do you want to do that again or do you not want to do that again? And, you know, it starts to help you build out because, you know, not everything is something that you need to say yes to. You know, what I mean? but when you're younger, you're just like anything that they'll give. You know what I mean? And so sure. I think that those those are part of those good things and those good opportunities where you start to begin to like put together this little list of experiences and things and people and mm -hmm. all those things. And if you get the opportunity to be able to start making, you know, some of those decisions uh, that don't, aren't just like kind of financially driven because we're so, especially here in America, we're so financially driven with everything. Like mm -hmm. every choice that we make is yep. predicated on money, um, whether we can do something or can't do something. And True. I think that that's important because I think a lot of people have missed um, a lot of their opportunities, a lot of their dreams, a lot of their desires because they're kind of chasing a dollar and yeah, you chase that. And then at the end of that, you kind of looking back and you're going, okay, yeah, I have that, but look at everything that I left and mm -hmm. didn't pursue just so I can kind of have this like, you know, um, stability, if you will, it's true. you know, and it's like, 
it's, and so it becomes this mindset. So I think that, you know, if we can kind of get out of that, I think that, you know, America might be in a little bit more of a mentally and emotionally more stable place. I agree. I agree. And as far as an artist goes, I mean, in, in the beginning, you want to do good work because like your reel will yeah. send you farther than $60 will. So it's like if you right. have really good work, that gets you agents and managers and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah. You know, it's you, so you much have longer. To put together, you have to put something on tape. You know, you yeah. have to have, you know, you have to have something on tape. Otherwise, people are like, we don't know. And I mean, I had that for years where it's like sure. they love the look. They love the interview process when I come down and sit with them. But it was like we don't have any footage to see if any of this translates on camera. Right. You know? And so that was really, really difficult because if I'm having meetings, I'm like, oh, I would like to do this. I like to do that. Like, well, we would like for you to do those things too, yeah. but we don't have anything. You <laughs> right. Know? And so, you know, again, it becomes that humbling thing to like, well, how do I get that? Like, well, you can go do student films, go do a student film or two. And it's like, yeah, uh, you know, and then that was weird because you're going in and there's people that are seven years younger than you telling you that you can't be in their project. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like what? You know, it's so you know, it's always a layer. There's always layers, and I always laugh at that. Like still to this day, people are like, "Yeah, I'm get over it." I'm like, "No, I'm not gonna get over it." Yeah. Like it's still weird to me that it's like, how are you gonna tell me that I don't know what I'm doing? Right. Uh, but you know, it's, it's all part of the journey, and I think that you know, it's good to be able to laugh about it now because I surely was not laughing about it. Sure. Uh, during, you know, in those times. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, it's all it's all an opportunity to get things on tape and, you know, and, and have those things. And, you know, you, you still get to learn and hopefully you make some contacts, you know, and that they're going to go places and be able to kind of build a network there mm -hmm. um, as well, you know, can be very, very helpful. So then as someone who's kind of ran this race for so long and has made it to the other side and has networked, do you have any advice for people nowadays who are trying to break in and kind of follow their dreams as well? Yeah, you know, I think one thing that it is is like you know invest fully in yourself um be, and i think you yeah. have to understand like we, like we talked about what what it is that you're why you're doing it um mm -hmm. because i think why you're doing it is going to really lead you to a a place where it allows you to really figure out for yourself like how long you're willing to pursue it and right. what things you're willing to give up in order to pursue it because you know somebody could be doing this and then get into a relationship and then that person's expectations are something completely different they want stability and they want this or that well that's really hard to promise somebody when you're trying to break into uh the stock market right you know and you're trying <laughs> to be a, a stock in the stock market it's really really difficult to do that sure you know and so it becomes this thing of like what are you willing to compromise what things are you willing to like kind of lose um, and I'm, I'm talking about more of like in the physical or not spiritually, but sure. just more so, you know, the expectations. And also, too, I think that, you know, because of this new um, the way that everything has been happening with COVID and stuff like that, the uh, opportunity to kind of go into audition rooms sure. are probably going to be very, very limited for the next year, maybe longer. Mm -hmm. And so I think getting very prevalent in doing self tapes um, and putting yourself on your camera, on your phone and learning that technique. Um, I think is going to be really, really helpful because the vast majority, if not all of them, are going to be through that. And so, like, for mm. me, that was something I always hated. I was like, I like being able to go in and yep. be personable and say, like, oh, I like your shoes or, like, hey, I saw this and have that kind of that thing where this is kind of different. It's like sure. you kind of show up and you record your thing. So I think that going forward for people that are looking to, to do that, create by yourself to start putting some things on tape because I think that the, the chances that people are going to take on some artists might not be the same sure. um, because they're going to expose what they know, especially during this climate when people are like, we just got to, we just got to get products going again. Right. You know? and so you kind of will probably pick up the phone and maybe just like, just work with the people that you've been with, like, right. Like go back to the war with the people you were in the Fox foxhole with previously. Sure. Um, it could be a lot of that for a little bit. And so during this time, put yourself on tape, record yourself, you know, I was doing it before. Where I would just find a monologue and study it for a couple of days and then set my camera up and then do the monologue. There you, you go. Know, and start to really put that. And so I think that working this, uh, working that muscle for, um, you know, on camera technique, I think is going to be really, really prevalent. And then also study movies. Don't just yeah. watch them for the entertainment purposes. Watch them for the actors. Watch, the, watch uh, movies where it's like slower pace which are the ones that i like because i like the actors i don't like to really care about the actor stuff too much mm -hmm. um but watch what they're doing when they're not doing anything yeah. you know like there's so much about you know all these actors like you can do everything and do nothing um yep. and so study 
you know, there's a lot of these different masterclass. Michael Caine has a great masterclass. Yeah. Um, I think it's like called Acting with Your Eyes that he did in the 70s or 80s. Mm-hmm. And I watched that thing in nausea. It's so you know, good. Because it was, it's everything, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think during this time, look at it kind of like as an opportunity to um, really take the pressure off of yourself and just study and get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. And it'll really time will tell because then when opportunities start coming, you'll look back and go, I should have just taken that whole month and exactly <laughs> focused on that. But now you're back in the thing and now things are coming and you're like, you weren't prepared because in your mind, you're like, oh, I have a, a solid amount of time to do this. Right. Well, you might not. You know, so I think that for me, I would look at it like that and then understand at the end of all of it, it's a business. It's an entertainment mm-hmm. industry. And anything that you have an industry at the end of it, it's a business first thing. So yep. you may not get something. It maybe doesn't have anything to do with you as an artist, as you know, as a man, as a woman. It could have everything to do with just the fact of, look, the executives want this person, the director wants his friend, or the producers want this. It, it's Oftentimes it can be like that. You know, sure. I've had plenty of, uh, I put in plenty of tapes um, into people and they never even opened it and you're like sure but you sent me a nine page audition you wanted me to do it in 24 <laughs> hours and i got fully off book and you know there's four monologues in it and you didn't even open it you're like oh okay sure. <laughs> uh, you know, you know. <laughs> i want this but, i want this i want this <laughs> like, it's like okay like i can't even get you to open it so right. you know I just, it's one of those things where it's like just use this as a training camp prepare 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 you know and then just like we do with everything, it's like if you really want to do this and you have to be willing to ebb with whatever the new everything mm-hmm. is, if that's something that you want to do. And if not, find other mediums and outlets for you to be able to express, especially because I think that going back on stage and doing that's going to be a little bit more difficult sure. um, because we don't know what that's going to look like. So I think that this is really kind of a time to brand yourself, invent yourself or reinvent yourself and or begin to really cultivate those seeds and figure out get all the roots out and get all the weeds away and really figure out how to, to plant a firm stronghold so that when things go forward, you feel more confident in yourself. Dude, that is some of the best advice I've ever heard. And I've done over a hundred episodes of this show. It's like, you're fantastic. But just that there was such a practical advice there. It wasn't like, you know, just believe in yourself and keep it up. You're like, no, here's the deal. Self tapes are going to be a real thing. Like, I love that. I love that. I try to try to be real. To yeah, give everybody, uh, 100% of 500. I love it. I absolutely love it. And dude, we've been talking for over an hour already. Look at us. We did it. We did it. We did it. This we was so it. fun, dude. And you have the coolest name. I meant to say that at the beginning, oh, but Denim Richards, you. that's thank the most you. badass name I've ever heard. You're like, please, you're great meant fan. to be a hero. I love it. <laughs> I love uh, it. Great, uh, great, uh, great family. Very, very creative and very, uh, you know, very uh, in tune with things. So it's it's a it's a blessing to be able to walk around with the name. Yeah, they did well. They did well. So before I let you go, though, uh, where can people find you online? Denim Richards, which is on the same thing for Instagram, the same thing for my Twitter, just uh, at Denim Richards, no underscores or anything, just straight up. Beautiful, beautiful. Yellowstone, season four is coming eventually. That cliffhanger, very mean, but, you know, you're, pr- you're proving it's, your... It's, it's, it's... You're but proving you're good know, at secrets. <laughs> just, just know that we are uh, we are here. We are doing it so that we hope to be able to deliver season four uh, on time, uh, which, you know, we should all be very, very grateful uh, mm-hmm, for. It. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is coming. But, yeah, much more to come. Love it. Love it. So excited. And. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. 
So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.